Here's David. David Hay coming out. His big night. Maybe his last night at the cruiserweight. Uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we're not not too <laughs> we're not too convinced out of the way. Are we? Certainly, Frank Maloney's got something to say about it. He, he differs uh, in opinion to David, who says this is it. This is it for him. He's going up to heavyweight after that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Steve, about what's your take? Well, my, my take on that is he is a big boy. He, he's, he, he, it's 14-4. The cruiserweight limit is not easy for him. He was 15-7 in his heavyweight fight earlier this year. And I think he can com comfortably do 15-10, 16-1, 16-2, 16-3. That's my gut feeling. But it's about pound notes and it's about the public demand. And if it, David wins tonight, let's make the fight, even if it's catchweight, involving Enzo and David Hay. Because that is the biggest domestic fight since Eubank and Ben, since Eubank and Collins, since those fights. And they were 15 16 16 years ago now. Enzo, when he did go up to heavyweight for that one fight and an impressive victory at that, he was 15 stone 7. He had to get down to 14 4 and he looked ripped for that 15 7 fight. So, how much will that take take out of him, if anything? It, it depends which he's done it. Uh, you know, he might have done smart, he might have uh, boiled down in the last week. It, you know, it totally depends. You know, obviously, some like Joe Kazagi loses a lot of weight. He does it sensibly uh, on on fight night. Then he got all his all his stamina, all his strength there. It, it just basically depends which way you go about it. Tail the tape, you can see how you can see younger and a far greater reach too. And a bit of height as well. And getting back to Enzo's point, Enzo's absolutely right. Anybody, any good athlete can lose two stone. It depends how much time they've got and how to do it. David's been in Northern Cyprus now since about May. The, this fight was meant to take place in September. It was postponed because of the Rugby World Cup and that only helped David. I think he's taken the weight off comfortably because he would have put it back on. What would be interesting, Enzo, I don't know about you, I'd love to know what David Hayes weighing right now in that ring right now. We've got uh, the big fight, David Hay, Jean-Marc Mormick, there you can see him, the title holder, the WBA, WBC Cruiserweight World Champion, Hay hoping to take those, those titles for him tonight in the outskirts of Paris. Let's get over there to the action now. Colonial Bell, and then won him back in March of this year. And a very good, I mean, probably the fight of the year, or at least a candidate for it. There he is, Jean-Marc Mormac. And the belts that this is all about. David Hay is decked up primarily white, but the Union Jack, the color of the flag of the United Kingdom in England. And his manager, Frank Maloney, one of the most colorful guys in boxing, is all decked out in a full suit of the Union Jack, including red shoes. Il a 35 ans, mesure 1m81, avec un poids de 90 kg, 300, et un palmarès de 36 combats, 33 victoires, dont 22 par KO, 3 défaites. The introductions Il continue to go on. We'll have three national anthems. Uh, the Italian WBC. national anthem will be sung by Frank Dana. The UK national anthem will be sung by Jean Gabriel de Saint Martin. And Jessica Parker will do the French national anthem. All that coming up here is Jean Marc gets introduced to the crowd in attendance. In the right corner, coming from London, Great Britain, with a record of 20 fights, 19 win with 18 knockout, one lost, David Hay! David Hay gets introduced. In the corner, coming from and London, of course, the, with a the booze come along with that because he's from the UK and not from France. 22 knockout and three loss. He's the current WBC, WBA, Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Jean-Marc Mormec! Jean-Marc Mormec uh, to a rousing uh, applause of the crowd in attendance here at the Marcel Sudan Palace of Sports. Les juges de cette rencontre sont messieurs Ray Hawkins pour les Etats-Unis, Alejandro Rochin pour le Mexique, and Guillermo Pineda for Panama. The judges, Guillermo Perez Pineda of Panama, Ray Hawkins, old friend from the USA, and Alejandro Rochin of Mexico. Three fine judges. This is a fight that can go a lot of different ways. Mormec is expected to be the better boxer of the two. David Hay is expected to knock him out in the first two or three rounds. If it goes beyond two or three rounds, 
People say that Mohamed is stronger now than uh, what he's been in his last several fights, and he could knock out Hay. So this is one of those fights that's terrific. It's a fight that has to happen. There are reasons both ways why this man, David Hay, could win, and the other man, the reigning champ, Jean-Marc Mohamed, who's 33-3, uh, and three, and this guy, Hay, is going to be dangerous early, and we expect to see Hay putting the world to hurt on Mohamed early. We'll see what happens. Mohamed with Richie Giacchetti, who suffered the stroke, Al Benani, Working with him and Dennis McKinney, David Hay is Adam Booth, uh, Nick the Rub Williams also with him, and James Sawyer, his corner guy. So we're set to go. It's down to the two. Promoter Frank Maloney says, my guy can knock this guy out inside of three, and then I'm off to the WBC convention. So we'll see what happens. Guido Cavallari gives the finest uh, final uh, signal to start the fight, and here we go. David Hay. Number one ranked contender in the world. Fighting for both championships, the WBA and WBC currently held by Jean-Marc Mormec. There was a lot of talk uh, before the fight about the rules that they would use. They are not using unified rules of boxing because the WBA and WBC couldn't get together on that. So the scoring is uh, kind of the French Federation of boxing. 10 point must scoring system, no standing eight count. There is a three knockdown rule. Uh, because the WBA and WBC couldn't agree on it. The WBC, as you know, has no three knockdown rule. But it cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and only the referee can stop the fight. In case of an accidental foul, we go to the scorecards after the fourth round is complete. Hay hasn't been able to touch him up yet. Hay has got a considerable uh, advantage in reach. He's got a six and a half inch uh, advantage in reach over Jean Marc Mormec. So Mormec will want to get on the inside of this guy. Mormec is a slick fighter. Hay is very quick with the hands. He's also quick on his feet. He probably would move up the heavyweight as he fought his last uh, fight at the heavyweight division, and he knocked out Thomas Bonin to try it at about 215 pounds. He certainly could fight at 225. He probably weighs 215 tonight, as does probably more Mac. They're bigger than 200 pounds, that's for sure. Digging body shot by Hay. More Mac hasn't opened up at all yet in the early going here, halfway through the first round. Hay backs off, backs off, and he does a lot of that. And when he backs off, he has a tendency to drop his left hand, and he could be hit by the right hand by Mormec. And we don't know what happens to him if he gets nailed because we haven't seen it. This guy's 19-1. and one. The only loss in his career was uh, uh, to Carl Thompson, and since then he stopped eight of nine opponents. Mormec cracks him with a little shot, eye on the forehead, uh, left side. This guy really tees off to the body, does uh, David Hay. Hay walks him down. This is a perfect way to fight this guy. You can't get hurt when you're walking the guy back on your heels. Now Mormec comes forward. Mormec hasn't opened up at all yet. Well, based on that, the first two round, the first two minutes of this first round is David Hay because Hay's been doing most of the work. Hay skips forward, gets that jab out there, catches a piece of the forehead. Now you hit Mormec, double jabs, and then back with the right hand to the body. And I'll tell you one thing is the uppercut comes by Mormec that Hay has got some confidence here. You'll hear anything that Mormec does, you'll hear the crowd get into him immediately. Hay is not intimidated by this guy at all. He's also three inches taller than Mormec, so he's a bigger man. Mormec goes to the body and right back to the body is David Hay. Hay continues to walk forward as he's tied up by Mormec, and that's good because Mormec can't have any power and really counter punch at all. And now referee uh, Guido Cavalieri says, hey, can't hang on but that's all academic nice shots nothing big landed except the finishing right hand body shot and this is the way he fights a lot more mech can counter this guy because hey likes to fight going back and off a lot jabs going back more mech finally landed a punch chopping right hand but no damage whatsoever hey, Put him together, John. Put him together. no big punch has been landed by david hay as yet and that's what uh, at least frank maloney is manager in the Don Majeski said, watch this guy's power early, and I haven't seen it yet, except some good body shots. Mormec is slick. He rolls with the punches. He knows what he's doing in there. And we saw him against O'Neal Bell, where he got hit, and now Mormec is putting the pressure on him, and that's what Richie Giacchetti called for through the translator for Mormec to, you know, keep putting the pressure on him. The first half of this round, fairly even. I think Mormec might be doing a little bit more right now than is David Hay. But Hay reaches with the right hand, touches him up to the left cheek. Jab right hand by Mormec. Wow, with the right hand, and then the left hook connects. 
the hands of David Hay. Hay skips forward. I don't like when he skips forward with his hand down because Womack will time a right hand. This guy can be hit with a right hand. I can tell you that right now. As long as you're throwing shots like this, it doesn't make any difference. See Womack trying to skip forward. If he sees that left hand down, all you got to do is hold your left hand out and keep it down and let your right hand fly. You can knock a guy out like that. But so far, uh, David Hay hasn't fought anybody in the caliber of a Mormack that could probably pick that up and do it. Because this guy, fighting as a cruiserweight, is very, very strong and heavy-handed. <laughs> Mormack is in tremendous physical condition. This guy looks awkward at times. So if you question the, you know, anything about his legs and whatnot, that's just the way this guy fights. Look at him, right on top of him. That's the experience, rolling with the punches. Getting on the inside. Momek having a better round number two than he had round number one, but that's because he put pressure on David Hay. Caught him with the right hand, spun the head of Hay. 20 seconds to go in round two. Momek might be in the process of stealing this round from Hay. Hay comes back, punishing body shot. I don't know if Momek can take these shots throughout the course of the fight. Hay may have a tendency to fade if we get into the, you know, six, seven, eight, nine rounds. We know Momek won't. All right, the bell ends the second round. It's a very soft bell here, so if guys are throwing at the bell slightly after, it's not their fault, in my opinion. I don't know. That's a close round of call. I think the judges will probably give it to Mormack. Adam Booth, Nick Williamson, Amy Sawyer. Nick also works with uh, Ricky Hatton. Nick the Rub, the nickname. He's one of the best over there in England. Watch the counter right hand. Misses the left. Boom, there's that right hand. And I told you this guy's exposed to a right hand. Womack didn't quite catch him flush with it, but that right hand is there. Watch the left glove of David Hay. He has a tendency to hang it and skip forward. And again, all Womack has to do is extend his left hand and then throw the right hand over it. He can catch him right on the chin anytime he wants. If Hay continues to do that. And let's see if he does. Here we go. Round number three. He hangs the left a little bit low. And he can get away with that with the probably most of the caliber of fighters that he's been fighting. Whether he can get away with it tonight is what this fight's all about. And Mormek has been down the road against some of the very best in this division. Including O'Neill Bell. And Wayne Bra Bra uh, Braithwaite. And, and Virgil Hill. But he hasn't fought too many guys who would have the power of David Hay. And Hay hasn't been able to land a big shot to the head thus far. In his last time out, Hay knocked out Bonin in the first round. But he hasn't been able to catch Mormek. Partially because Mormek fought the first round very cautiously. Mormek in the black trunks tries to keep pressure on Hay in the white trunks of the UK flag. Red, white, and blue. So it's Hay to the left of your screen, Womack to the right of your screen. Minute gone here in round number three. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan. You're watching King Vision. We're coming to you from the Palais des Sports Marcel Chardin in Louvelois in France. Glad that you're with us wherever you're watching. Gino Cavallari, third man in the ring. Good referee from Italy. WBC official. There's a right-hand lead that time by Mormack. Nothing behind it, really, but the crowd uh, gets into it every time Mormack does anything. <laughs> Vicious body shot. So far, the best shots of the, of the night have been by David Hay with his, with his left hooks to the body. Nice, slick move by David Hay. See now what Frank Maloney was telling me about how nice and slick he is on his feet. That's nice movement there. Now he gets caught back into the ropes and he pushes his man back. When you catch him like that, you want to hook your right hand around the uh, left arm and walk him back. He didn't do it that time, and uh, Mormek escapes. Mormek is very, very slick, rolls with punches, and his hay again coming in. Stepped on each other's feet. Guido says, hey, keep it nice and clean, guys. As that vicious left hook to the body again. Pretty soon you're going to see Mormek with his right hand come down and protect those ribs because you can't continue to take vicious shots like that. What he's going to do is go back downstairs. You see, again, man, I can't believe that Mormek hasn't seen how exposed 
the left side of the face is. With him hanging that left hand down, he's wide open for a counter right hand. Mormack is going to see it. He, he jabs, jabs. He's a looping right hand, partially blocked in the gloves by uh, Mormack. Mormack is, is very, very slick in there, and, and, and that's part of the reason why Hay hasn't been able to catch him yet upstairs. But he's hit him with some vicious body shots. As I say that, he clipped a pretty good high in the left cheek. Okay, the belly ends round three. Another tough, tough round to score. I don't know. I, because of the viciousness of the body shots, I got to give that round to Hay. So I'm back and forth. These are, I mean, the stuff upstairs and the, and the boxing is more mixed, but Hay with the, you know, in professional boxing, it's damage doled out. And I think those body shots are taking a toll. It's certainly damaging. Comes forward, comes forward, and finally there's the right hand. But, you know, he's going to load up that right hand. What happened that time was Mormick got his right shoulder forward, and then he reached with his right hand. He's got to come in and just let his left hand go by that eye and then throw the right hand behind it, and he can take his head off. He, even if he doesn't let the left hand go by the eye, just drop it down on his hand because David Hay is giving him, exposing the whole left side of his body. He's wide open for the right hand. And certainly Richie Giacchetti, who's handled a the likes of uh, Larry Holmes and, uh, and Mike Tyson would pick things up like that if they can translate it to him. Watch Womack pick it up. See that left hand down again? This is by design right now because he's coming back with those vicious left hooks to the body. But again, that time Womack was caught reaching with the right hand instead of setting it up better and getting it and get himself in. He's getting too squared up when he gets in tight. And then that means that Womack will lack the power when he comes in. This is the angle he's got to come in at. There's the right hand there, but that's not the one I'm looking for. That'll be there all night. David Hay, on the other hand, really needs to get that left hand up a little bit. But, he, you know, he's, he's hit him with such great body shots. I don't want to criticize the way he's fighting the fight. This is the first time I've actually seen him in action, and I like what he's doing against Mormek. After all, I get him winning two of the first three rounds. Touches up, jabs him, walk him back. I like that on his heels. Doing a nice job walking Mormek back. That hand down again. You watch for it. Sooner or later, this Mormack has got to pick this up. Oh, and he hits him with a good shot. And he hurt him. Hit him with the right hand, and he's down. He caught him with the left hand, and then he followed it up with the right. Hey, scramble. It counts up to seven and eight, and he jumps right back up. But you know something, folks? His legs aren't there. I told you that side was exposed. And when Mormack got him in trouble, he knew what to do with the right hand. Now, can Hay survive this a lot of time? 126. Mormack comes in. And if he can possibly finish him off, he'll try to do it. He knows how to finish. David Hay down here in the fourth round. And his legs are totally back. Hay continues to hang that left hand down. He seems to be back, but he's wobbled on his legs. Mormack comes forward, catches him, just misses the right hand. David Hay is still exposed to the left side. And Mormack has realized that he throws the right hand, catches him again with the right hand, but he doesn't dump him, but it took an effect in his knees. I'll tell you this, David Hay is ready to go again, but he comes back and clips him with a pretty good shot. Mormack shouldn't have complained about it because he's given the chance. Mormack really shouldn't have complained because it stopped his momentum. He should have jumped right on him when he, when he hit him behind the head because it took the referee about 10 seconds to explain it to him. And meanwhile, I think David Hay might have his legs back. He's up on his toes a little bit, just a little bit slightly heavy in the heels. But remember, he's open for that right all night. And especially when he turns his body like this, Mormack knows it. He set it up with a left hook and a right hand that dropped David Hay. And then he hit him with another following right. And he's hitting him again at will. So Mormack has decided that if he's going to hang the left, I'm going to take advantage of it. Hay has got to get that up there. There's the right hand again. The bell ends the fourth round again. It's a very light bell, so they're going to continue. That's a great round for Moore Mech. That's a two-point round for him. So Moore Mech wins two and four, but he wins the fourth round 10-8. Putting him in the front in the fight. Watch this. Left hook right there in the right hand. 
just grazed him. He really didn't get as deep into him with the right hand as I thought, but he gets him again here. How do you like to do now? All right, all right. He did a nice job scrambling. Watch Hay when he gets hit and realizes he's in a bit of trouble. He does a nice job. Now, see, he goes down. And partially, you can't see it in that shot, but his right foot slipped on a pad that's on the on the canvas here. And that causes him problems. He slips, and his legs go from underneath him. And he scrambles to get his balance back. And in the meantime, Mormek jumped on him. So he had a little bit of help from that pad. Here we go, round five, the Colonel Bob Sheridan here. You're watching King Vision, Palais des Sports, Marcel Jardin, Louvelois, France, in the white trunks with the Union Jack flag of the UK, and he catches Mormack with a left hook that time. Mormack holds his hands high. This guy, David Hayes, could be like a wounded animal, and that he's still dangerous. He's teeing off to the head now. No more body shots. He's going to the head. The chant continues, Mormack, Mormack. There's the left hook upstairs. He's throwing more headshots in this round than I've seen at any other round in the fight for David Hay. And that had to be called for from his corner. Remember the big question in this fight, would Mormack be able to survive the first three or four rounds? Well, he's done that. Now the question is, can Hay have himself in condition enough to survive the middle rounds of this fight? Because the late rounds, we know Mormack is gonna be very strong. All that's neutralized if you get cracked with the right hand though. And Hay has considerable power. His legs, by the way, are totally back. Doesn't have one of those body shots. But Mormack is in such tremendous physical condition. So far, he's been able to hold up to it. Chopping right hand again. Hay knows what to do when he's on the inside. I like the fact that, uh, you know, when he, when he slipped and that leg went from underneath him, that he scrambled. Uppercut, right hand again. That left hand is altogether too low as far as I'm concerned. But that's the way Hay fights. And again, he's been getting away with it. He's 19 and one with 18 knockouts. But this is a this is a very clever fighter that he's in against tonight. John Mark Mormack. John Mark to the right of your screen in black in the white trunks of the Union Jack. There's the right hand again. Right hand's there on the light. The left hook cracked into the right side of the face, and Hay comes back with a couple of awkward shots of his own with a little over a minute to go here in round number five. Interesting fight. And the thing I liked about it is coming into the fight. There were a lot of reasons why either guy could win. Left hand gets through. This is a good boxing round so far for Mormack. David Hay has had his moments, especially those crushing body blows that he's able to land. But remember, he started out the round going upstairs more than in any other round of this fight. Uses his shoulder. Boy, Mormack has got to be just drooling to throw the right hand. And he comes in. Sneaky, the guy comes with an uppercut. Look at this again. Mormack is seeing things now. He's totally aware of what David Hay is trying to do. Hay loads up the right hand and it skips past the ear of Jean-Marc. David Hay is slick, he's strong, misses his uppercut bid. He's got that look, a real cocky look on his face. David Hay, if he wins this, will be one of the most popular guys in England. Was a, not to take anything away from Joe Kelsaki. <laughs> but the bell ends. That was a pretty good round for Hay. It's one of those very close rounds. I don't know how you score that round. I'm gonna get you score it even because uh, there wasn't too much between them. The judges won't score that round even though. So we'll remember that if it goes to the scorecards later on and it's close and it gets controversial. John, you're doing good. You're doing good. But so your combination. That's the interpreter there talking in his ear. Richie Giacchetti giving the signals as the uppercut catches him. And back with those body shots. And while well, the body shots usually, you know, you break the body down, they say the head will follow, but to this point, the head hasn't followed. And that to me is a very, very close round. The fifth round. All right, we're getting ready to go to round number six. This is scheduled for 12, the WBA, WBC Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Mormek with his back two in the black trunks. David Hay with the colors of the flag of the UK and the white trunks. Big, strong guy. He was down in the fourth round. A left hook and right hand dropped him, and then he, and he slipped on the uh, ring pad. And it is uh, Mormek coming in again. And Guido Cavalieri says, hey, keep the hands up. I didn't notice any low blows myself there, but hey, he's right on top of it. 
There's that left hand down again by Hay, and I continue to point that out because I just have a feeling that sooner or later it's going to play a key role in this fight. Another fairly low blow that time by Mormek uh, below the hip. And, you know, he's going head hunting with the right hand. He, he, he's, he loves the fact that that left hand is down, but he wasn't able to click on it either time. Nice, tough uppercut by David Hay. Hay cracks him with the left hand. He really needs to get up on his toes. He's got he's got the speed. He loads up the right hand, partially blocked that time by Mormek. Mormek counters with his own right hand. The right hand is there all night for Mormek. And now he drags Hay across. This is a big ring, by the way. I, I don't really know who it, it favors because Mormek rolls with his punches and wants to move away from the big guy. And the big guy is very quick on his feet, so you know it doesn't hurt him any either. So it, it's kind of a, a quits as far as who it is. Who has the advantage here in the big ring? Hey, skipping forward, having a pretty good sixth round here now. Loads up the right hand. He caught Mormack. Nice uppercut. But he hasn't been able to shift Mormack. Mormack better not toy with this guy because this guy has considerable power. When you're fighting a guy that's a legitimate heavyweight, and I think that David Hay will become a legitimate heavyweight in his career no matter what happens in this fight tonight. You know, he had about eight or ten weeks to get ready for this fight. It was originally scheduled for September. And according to my pal Frank Maloney, he thought that that would favor him in, in losing weight, uh, not having to drop from 215 down to 200 in a, in a fast manner. But nonetheless, the guy might want to be able to carry 215 pounds in a fight. That puts him in the in-between size as a heavyweight. So ideally, tonight's the night for David Hay to win the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Defend it once or twice and then uh, go on up to heavyweight. Guy's 27 years of age and he gets into 30, he's going to carry it. That seems to be the age of the, the, the heavyweights now, anyway, in their prime. Hay skipping forward, continues to hang that left hand low. Mormack faints out, light jab, pushed away. I think this is a hay round in my book. Closing seconds now of the sixth round. Mormack hasn't done much in the sixth round at all. And there's the bell right at the bell. Hay was in the process of throwing it. That's a Hay round. So I've got this fight dead even after six rounds. I feel like a right now. All right, I'll get it. I'll get it. Water. Keep nice and still. Perfect. That ain't good, yeah? 32 punches. Cool. All right? Yeah. You're well within, Dave. Round seven. Cool. All right? So you've got to make sure you keep the discipline and win the Cargo. round. He's only got two assaults in him in a round. Okay. All right? Drink. Make him boxer. See, hey, doing a nice job here. Right Make him boxer. Defense. Defense. That's exactly what I'm chatting about. All right? Deep breath. I'm going to score 57-57 after six, so it's dead even. David Hay was down in the fourth round. Fifth round, too close to call. We got to remember that. And Hay has won the first on my score sheet, the third and the sixth. Five, too close to call for me. But if some of the judges have it, you know, for one guy as opposed to the other, then that's where the fight uh, stands right now. But it's close after six. Again, I pointed out to you because I still have a feeling it's going to be a factor before this fight's over. Hay carrying that left hand low. But Mormack, if he doesn't have the left shoulder turned in, he can't get a lot of power with the right hand if he's squared up like he is right now. When Mormack comes in and his shoulders are squared in, even with David Hay exposing his left side, Mormack can't really land a vicious blow. And his David Hay caught him with a couple of pretty good shots. Vicious body shots. Well, he's landed that uh, right hand power shot to the body throughout. Now Mormack's starting to get hit, and down he goes! Mormack may not be able to recover from this! He really blasted him. It's up to four and five and six. It looks like he'd be ending it up at seven and eight. Barely up as Jean-Marc Mormack. It's all over. David Hay knocked out Jean-Marc Mormack. It'll be scored as a seventh round technical knockout victory. Guido Cavallari looks into the eyes of Jean-Marc Mormack. And we have a brand new WBA, WBC cruiserweight champion of the world. His name is David Hay. Look at this. Watch this. 
Right there, he cracked him with the left hand. Caught enough of the wrist with the right hand, vicious body shots, but it was the uppercut that did the damage. Skipping forward, cracks him right by the ear, and that's all she wrote. Watch this shot coming up. He's turning his head away, a little bit behind the ear, but when the guy's turning away, there's nothing he can do about it. You see his hand come right, uh, right up. A tremendous knockout victory. It'll be scored as a TKO because, as a matter of fact, Mormack did get up. But looking into the eyes, Guido Cavallari said, no, you can't continue. And David Hay is a brand new WBC, WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World. So he's done it. Congratulations to Frank Maloney and Don Majeski and all the guys in the corner, Adam Booth, Mick Williams, James Sawyer did a great job getting him ready. Hey, able to escape any problems that resulted from hanging the left hand low. He just had too much power, and that was a great thing about this fight from the get-go. You wonder where the career of Mormek goes, if this will be it for him now. Because this kid, David Hayes, got some kind of power. And, and to David Hayes' credit, he was knocked down in the fourth round, although there was a bit of a slip uh, that was involved there. He scrambled and he recovered. And the fifth round was a very close round, but I thought Hay definitely won the sixth round, which got him even. And then the seventh, uh, for all practical purposes, a KO victory for David Hay because it was the power shot that knocked him down. And again, it'll be scored as a TKO victory because Mormack did get up, but David Hay, boy, he unleashed the power. And when he did, that's all she wrote. So the powerful young David Hay at 27 years of age, and he's a guy that is going to be reckoned with probably for a couple of more fights in the cruiserweight division. And then maybe England, you've got yourself another heavyweight. Who knows? Round eight. After all, it was Frank Maloney who uh, engineered the beginning of the career of uh, Lennox Lewis and did a great job. Well done. Uh, amazing fight. Amazing. Real, 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 real. On a tough night for Jean-Marc Mormec. Things were going his way, and it seemed to turn around in the fifth round, and Mormec had him down in the fourth and couldn't finish him off. And then, man, he got cracked with that left hand. Watch this right. Yeah, that was partially blocked on the wrist and the glove, but it still oh, jarred the head. This was earlier in the fight when Mormec was putting pressure on David Hay. Hay able to avoid the big right hand shot. And then that uppercut is what set it up. That uppercut snapped the, the brain stem and then the right hand right on the ear is slightly behind that it. it's academic because he was turning away. David and that makes it official as David Hay is the brand new WBA and WBC Cruiserweight Champion of the World. You and a great victory. WBC, so there's all WBA. kinds of guys like World Steve champion, Cunningham, David Krestoff. Here are the new Cruiserweight Champion for Santanta. It's the first time the fans in England have seen you on Santanta. What would you like them to know about your skills as a heavyweight and a Cruiserweight Champion? I think my, what I want to say is you saw an explosive fight there. You saw me very weight drained in there and as he hit me with a shot oh, my legs completely went you know I was a bit when I went down I thought oh you know my legs felt really shaky but I thought okay I, I'm a champion I've got heart get up work your way through it this guy's a big puncher and, and every time he was hitting my arms I could feel it but me and Adam Booth working hard in North Cyprus in our training camp you know we, we got it right perfectly but this this guy was a tough tough guy he's a great cruiserweight but I show I show class and I show patience and I showed that what you have to show to be, to be the number one fighter in the world it's the patience that I noticed right away in yeah. round one, that you yeah. were super focused. Yeah. Even when you got tagged later yeah. in the sixth, yeah. you came right back looking yeah. at him. How did you keep your patience and avoid going for the big right? Believe it or not, it was uh, fights like the Ishmael Abdul fights, which were completely boring for the fans, but we worked on a strategy and I held it together. Just like this fight, the old David Hay would have got stuck in, you know, and particularly with this weight, the weight making, I would have probably run out of steam. So I knew I had to pace myself, um, something that I won't have to do at heavyweight. I think once I go up to heavyweight, I'll be able to throw a lot more punches simply because I won't have had to take off two stone before the fight. But I'm glad that this is my last fight at cruiserweight. 
and I'm glad that I, I got the win. And, you know, representing everyone in Britain, you know, there's Joe, there's, uh, Joe Calzaghe representing, he's number one. There's me now number one. Let's hope Ricky Hatton can go and do that, take, take the title. Go Ricky, and let's go and beat Mayweather. And you've got three of the top fighters in the world. And if there's anybody out there, and I'm sure there's um, uh, Enzo Macronelli. He's, he's going to 100% want to fight. He's a good fighter. He wants to fight for his belts. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be uh, defending these belts. We can have a fight, no doubt about it, but it's going to have to be at heavyweight. Because uh, as you saw in that, uh, when I got tagged, the legs aren't there at cruiserweight, but they'll be there at heavyweight. So let's get that fight. And I know it's a fight that the fans want. So uh, I'm a free agent. Let's make the fight happen. Well, Matt Benelli was in the studio watching your match tonight. Would you ever go to Cardiff to fight him? I'd go anywhere. I've shown. I've come over to Paris in this guy's hometown to fight the world champion. I would love to go to Cardiff. Cardiff fans are great. They got they had 50,000 people for Joe Calzaghe. Even though they wouldn't be cheering for me, it's still the atmosphere. I'll soak up the atmosphere. So I'd love to make that fight. It's a great fight for the fans. Enzo McCrady, let's make it happen. Unfortunately, it's not going to be for these belts. It's going to have to be a heavyweight. Um, so let's just get it on. Here with the new Cruiserweight champion for Santanta. It's the first time the fans in England have seen you on Santanta. What would you like them to know about your skills as a heavyweight and a Cruiserweight champion? I think my, what I want to say is you saw an explosive fight there. You saw me very weight drained in there and as he hit me with his shot on my legs completely went you know i was a bit when i went down i thought oh you know my legs felt really shaky but i thought okay I, i'm a champion i've got heart get up work your way through it this guy's a big puncher and, and every time he was hitting my arms i could feel it but me and adam booth working hard in north cyprus in our training camp you know we we got it right perfectly but this this guy was a tough tough guy he's a great cruiserweight but i show i show class and i show patience and i showed that what you have to show to be, to be the number one fighter in the world it's the patience that I noticed right away in yeah. round one, that you were yeah. super focused. Yeah. Even yeah. when you got tagged later yeah. in the sixth, yeah. you came right back looking yeah. at him. How did you keep your patience and avoid going for the big right? Believe it or not, it was uh, fights like the Ishmael Abdul fights, which were completely boring for the fans, but we worked on the strategy and I held it together. Just like this fight, the old David Hay would have got stuck in, you know, and particularly with this weight, the weight making, I would have probably run out of steam. So I knew I had to pace myself, um, something that I won't have to do at heavyweight. I think once I go up to heavyweight, I'd be able to throw a lot more punches simply because I won't have had to take off two stone before the fight. But I'm glad that this is my last fight at cruiserweight. And I'm glad that I, I got the win. And, you know, representing everyone in Britain, you know, there's Joe, there's, uh, Joe Calzaghe representing. He's number one. There's me now number one. Let's hope Ricky Hatton can go and do that, take, take the title. Go, Ricky. And let's go and beat Mayweather. And you've got three of the top fighters in the world. And if there's anybody out there, and I'm sure there's um, uh, Enzo Macronelli. He's, he's going to 100% want to fight. He's a good fighter. He wants to fight for his belts. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be uh, defending these belts. We can have a fight, no doubt about it, but it's going to have to be at heavyweight. Because uh, as you saw in that, uh, when I got tagged, the legs aren't there at cruiserweight, but they'll be there at heavyweight. So let's get that fight. And I know it's a fight that the fans want. So uh, I'm a free agent. Let's make the fight happen. Well, Matt Benelli was in the studio watching yeah. your match tonight. Would you ever go to Cardiff to fight him? I'd go anywhere. I've shown. I've come over to Paris in this guy's hometown to fight the world champion. I would love to go to Cardiff. Cardiff fans are great. They got they had 50,000 people for Joe Calzaghe. Even though they wouldn't be cheering for me, it's still the atmosphere. I'll soak up the atmosphere. So I'd love to make that fight. It's a great fight for the fans. Enzo McCready, let's make it happen. Unfortunately, it's not going to be for these belts. It's going to have to be a heavyweight. Um, so let's just get it on.